London Heathrow. Host to 78 million passengers, nearly half a million flights, and one very unusual animal reception centre. Animals passing through Heathrow come here to be checked in. Come on in. Hi guys. I missed you. I haven't seen you all day. Also known as the Ark, it's equipped to welcome <coughs> almost any species through its doors. <laughs> From reptiles and livestock to pets and predators, it's up to the Ark to make sure every one is clear to enter the country. Full of energy. That's always a good sign. <laughs> More than 200,000 animals passed through last year alone, and its dedicated team of over 40 staff are on hand every hour of every day. Come on, kitty. That's it, that's it, that's it. And are always prepared to expect the unexpected. See the spines of the teeth. Today on Animal Airport. Just care for your fingers, please. The staff get a treat with an exotic shipment. You don't get to be up this close with animals like this anyway, really, other than this place. It's really cool. Apprentice Haley is getting hands-on with some of the larger visitors. I'm nervous because I feel like I'm going to get like, my feet squished. And there's a hold-up for transatlantic traveller Ella the Labrador. I just really want my dog. <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> The Animal Reception Centre is border control for all live animals arriving at Heathrow Airport. Any creature, big or small, that passes through must be checked to make sure it's allowed to enter the country. And today in the yard, Animal Health Officer Stu is overseeing a big arrival from Sydney, Australia. Uh, so we've got a load of horses coming in which we're about to offload onto our scissor lift. So yeah, we're going to try and get them in as quick as possible and get them out, all right? There are eight thoroughbred racehorses to offload before they head on to various stables across the country. It's just so interesting. You don't know what you're going to see. Like, it could be a lion, it could be a dog, it could be a cat, birds that you like, or snakes, reptiles, and they come from all over the world, so you're never really going to see something that's the same. Um, I started actually as a work experience, um, and then from that they um, thought I was obviously good enough. We're like a big family and everyone just like is always there to help each other wherever we're needed. Five years on, now an animal health officer, it's Stu's turn to help the new recruits. Today, it's apprentice Haley. So it's Haley's first time uh, properly doing it with myself as well. So um, yeah, I'm just showing out uh, what, what the ropes are basically and uh, how to actually do it safely. Between me and Haley, we've just got to try and manoeuvre this, get it onto the back one and get the next one in. Um, and then once we're doing that, uh, the horse loaders, they're all going to take out the horses and then walk them around the stables a little bit. Thoroughbred horses can be worth millions of pounds. No pressure then. We do sometimes get racing horses in um, and some uh, quite expensive horses. So yeah, we should be quite careful with them, obviously. Right, so what we're going to do, um, when they're ready, we're just literally going to put the ramp down. Um, do you want to grab a broom for me quickly, Hayley? So you can put the flap up. So yeah, we're just going to bring the flap down and then they're going to bring the horses off. What? What have I got to do? We're just going to push this flap on top of the roof oh, okay. so then this can fold down. Right. Yeah. After travelling for more than 24 hours, it's vital for the team to help the animals stretch their legs as soon as possible. Lovely. Because I feel like I'm going to get my fingers squished. A lot of physical work. Right back, yeah. I need to work on my muscles. After such a long journey, horses can be tired and jumpy. Moving them could be risky if not done properly. I've just got to push this up. It can't be that hard. Slowly as possible, because it scares the horses. That's it. Lovely. Come, it's all right. That's it, there you go. Wanna do that bit? Sorry. 
Hold up. There you go. That's it. A bit more. Lovely. So push it all the way in. Uh, the other way, the other way. That's it. And then there's a latch. See the latch? Look at the latch here. Yeah, that's it. And it comes off. And then... Yeah, just watch yourself when you bring this one down. All right. I am missing something. There we go. Are you ready? <laughs> it's actually harder than it looks. Yeah. Every day I learn something new. And this is my something new today. Four down, four to go. At the centre's reception, Admin Officer Mel is trying to track down another group of long-distance travellers. But this time, it's a more exotic cargo. We're expecting a shipment of animals from Madagascar that were meant to arrive, I believe, on Saturday that didn't arrive. Not sure why. Could be that they had problems getting the animals in the boxes. You know, animals are very unpredictable. So we're just trying to get hold of the shipper to see if they're still coming in, when they're coming in, so we can go out and pick them up. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering if there was an update on whether the Madagascar shipment is coming in tomorrow or not, just so we can put it on our board. It's definitely coming in, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye-bye. So yeah, they're on the flight now, so they will be arriving tomorrow at four. The shipment of exotic animals will include the endangered fossa, a cat-like mammal that's only found in Madagascar. They're very cute, but look slightly evil. They can grow up to six feet long and are Madagascar's top predator, known for their razor-sharp claws and teeth. For Supervisor Kaylee, even with her six years of experience, this is an exciting arrival. I think it's four fossas, three civets and 15 flying foxes. I think I've seen a fossa here before, maybe when I first started, so about six years ago, but not since then. When they get here, we'll just we'll put them into our den area, so where we do all our large animal checks. Our first check is to make sure we're alive, um, check the water. If we need to um, get into the boxes to feed them, We'll have grids in the way to make sure they can't get out, it's all safety. We'll have loads of stuff on just to make sure nothing goes wrong. An exotic shipment like this is unusual, but endangered animals are often moved for breeding or conservation programs. And the Ark gets all creatures, great and small, passing through. Deputy Manager Susie and Apprentice Callum have jumped at the chance to help. I've not seen Fossa come through the Ark before now, so uh, and they're one of the really exciting things that, that's actually happened since I've been here. Just when you think you're actually getting a little bit bored with all the standard stuff, all of a sudden you get a shipment from Madagascar and it all gets exciting again, and that's, that's a bit special. Do you need a hand? Yeah, some of them are quite heavy. But the long journey seems to have left one fossa a bit jet lagged. What? Oh, he's, he's in he's that really, corner. Yeah. Whoa. Apparently, this one's been a bit grumbly already. A bit vocal, so we just have to be cautious. But with wild animals, we're cautious anyway, so. Where are we going? The den, was it? Yeah. So it should be all 15 Shut flying foxes in here. Can you hear them? Oh, wow. All off, so now it's time to go have some fun. It's feeding time in the den. Heathrow sees more than 25 million business travellers every year, including plenty of the four-legged variety. For these eight thoroughbred horses, it's a stop-off after a flight from Australia. Animal Health Officer Stu is teaching Apprentice Haley how to unload them safely in the Ark stables. And if you just push up, it normally should roll back off of it. It's important the horses are checked over and get a chance to walk around after their long flight. Four horses are out of their boxes, and there's just four more to release before they can be sent to their new homes across the country. Are right, you ready this time? Yeah? I'm not. There's the other side. I wasn't ready myself. Go on. It's all right, it's all right. Go on. 
That's it. Drop, drop, drop. Teaching people in general, I find that is actually probably one of the things I enjoy the most. Because yeah. like, you actually feel like you're gaining something from it. Like you can see the, the difference in things that you're teaching people. So it's quite interesting. It's doing really well, actually. Oh, I'm doing really well. I didn't realise how many hazards there were. Squished by a massive box or kicked by a horse. You want to jump on that side for us, hey? Whenever you're ready. Oh man, I'm roasting. Really, really hot. All right, we're going to go back, all right? Now the horses are offloaded. Each one has to be checked that they're disease-free and here legally before they're allowed to enter the UK. Um, once it all complies, um, we can actually start loading them up into their horse boxes. So all in all, it should only take about half hour, 45 minutes for us to get all sorted, um, hopefully on a good day. All horses are given the all clear you can start to load them into their horse boxes for the final part of their journey. All horses are gone now, so literally all we've got to do is just clean out the stables and all the poop all over the floor. Hayley's done really well today as well, so yeah, no injuries and it's all safe and everyone's happy. Job done. Eight more happy travellers safely on their way. But the work never stops at the Ark. They can see as many as 100 animals a day. A typical traveller is Ella, a Labrador from Texas heading for her new home in the UK. Apprentice Erin is charged with making her feel at home. So this is Ella Mia. She's, um, she's come from the US. Um, we're just going to get her into her cows there because she's been um, she's been on a long flight. And they can be quite stressed, you know. They might be um, quite thirsty as well. So um, and they generally do really need the toilet as well. So it's good to get them out as quickly as possible. In the waiting room, Ella's owner Tiffany can't wait to see her dog after more than a day apart. So I work for a company that has an office here. So I travel back and forth between Texas and Bristol, United Kingdom. And my dog is moving over here to be with my partner's parents while I'm traveling. And so we left yesterday um, from Texas, and we've been, like I said, we've been awake for about 24 hours, and the dog's been in her kennel about 24 hours, and we're just eager to get her. The UK is rabies free. So before pets can be reunited with their owners, it's crucial their record is checked for vaccinations against rabies and other diseases, and that it matches with the ID number on their microchip. Every dog has to be chipped to um, pass the pet travel scheme. So when, um, when we read the chip, we'll write down the paperwork, it'll be taken over to the office and they'll make sure that everything corresponds with the, um, with the uh, vaccinations and things. Poor Ella had problems with her ID before she even got on the flight. Her American chip would not work in the UK, so she had to be chipped a second time and then she had to be given a rabies vaccination after the second chip, so she's been rabies vaccinated twice, chipped twice, and now wormed, and she doesn't even have any worms. Yes, it's been quite a, quite a process with all the paperwork and the expense, and I just really want my dog. <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> but all those documents that took so long to get seem to have gone missing somewhere between Texas and London. If they can't be found, there's no proof Ella isn't carrying rabies, and she'll be sent straight to quarantine for several. I'm just uh, quite anxious and ready for them to f figure out what they need to do to get me my dog. For Ella and Tiffany, the journey's not over yet. The centre has welcomed a rare shipment of exotic animals from Madagascar. For Kaylee, Susie and Callum, it's feeding time in the den where the staff deal with any wild animals. Hi. First up are the 15 flying foxes, a type of bat that gets its name from its fox-like pointy snout 
and large ears. Uh, we're going to go through them all and make sure that everything's in order, that the transport containers are OK, that they're uh, alive, and then we'll feed them. It's going to open up like this, because there's, hi there's hinges here. Unless it's a box in a box. We might have flying foxes everywhere. Oh, their faces are really cute. Oh, they're really cute aren't yeah. They? Careful your hands. Yeah. Don't want you getting bitten. Luckily for the staff, the animals are in a cage inside the boxes, but they still need to be fed. Enter Kaylee with a plan. I've got bananas for these guys. Oh, we can get it in there. Yeah, we can just put it in bits, can't we? we just... Yeah, but we can just literally push it through the top. Eating, toileting and drinking is the three main things we look for. So the aim really is just to keep them hydrated. One's got one. They like it. Is it eating? Yeah, one's got one in the corner. Good, 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 good. They've got too stressed out then. I can't stand bananas. I can't stand the smell. I don't like to look at them. I was quite horrified when she she came out with a crate of bananas. And the bats, the bats kind of stink anyway. It's like my worst nightmare, this. <laughs> Next up are the striped civets. Shy, nocturnal mammals found only in the forests of Madagascar. The problem we have with opening these is I don't know exactly how they're constructed, so I don't know if I'm opening the box completely or not. I'm assuming, no, there is. Ah, lovely. These cat-sized carnivores Hi. have a stocky body and dark stripes. They're very cool. I've never seen a civet before. It's one of the perks. You don't get to be up this close with animals like this anyway, really, other than this place. Just like the flying foxes, the civets have to be fed from a safe distance. And today, it's mice on the menu. I'm going to feed the civet. I don't want to get bitten, so using tongs. Oh, he's, he's right there. Yeah, he's got it. He's got it. Wash down with some water. Hopefully, these guys are hungry. Oh, he's there. He's right here. Look, come on, I can see you. Take it. Please. So let's try the other guy. Yeah, he's got it. He's got it. OK, so now he's got to do the fourth fossa. Fossa. <laughs> Fossa only like to eat one thing, meat. Beef. From Madagascan mammals to precious pets, Labrador Ella is still waiting for the all clear to be reunited with owner Tiffany after her paperwork went missing en route. We've been awake for about 24 hours and the dog's been in her kennel about 24 hours and we're just eager to get her. But Ella's travel documents have finally been retrieved. It's fine. We found it. Yeah. Ella right. is at last on her way to her owner. It's okay. they, they said she's finally coming. Yeah. After 24 hours? Longer than, that. Longer than now, maybe yeah. 25, 20, 26 hours? I am feeling very tired and very excited to see her. And um, my mom and my brother and my sister have all been texting trying to find out if she is uh, finally through and in and well, and so we'll send her a photo, send them all photos. <laughs> one happy owner and one very happy dog. I think she's happy. Two months later, Ella is loving her new home in Bristol. She's happy and uh, I think she really enjoys being here, enjoys all the attention. She gets lots and lots of love, lots of walks. She's happy, happy to be an English dog. I wouldn't fly her anywhere again, would you? Oh, yes. You would? Well, you filled in the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Back at Heathrow with the flying foxes and civets fed, it's time for the fosses dinner. Raw meat is the only dish for a discerning fosser. Not sure how much of the beef to give these guys, but split three boxes between four. Has he got two bowls? Fossers have a reputation for being aggressive, so the feeding tongs are back out. For some beef. And it's a good thing too. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. He, it's like. Look. I think that would be a yes then. He's hungry. Yeah. Some beef. <laughs> he really wants it. This is actually really cool. <laughs> we weren't quite expecting them to um, to be reaching their arms through and grabbing the food out of the tongs, uh, but that was really really uh, amusing to see. Oh yep, he's very hungry. We look after them and check them, but actually feeding them and seeing that kind of reaction, seeing them pretty relaxed, pretty like showing normal behaviours, is quite nice. <laughs> I really want to touch his hand. I, I won't. <laughs> I know, I know. I just think so there. We want to high-five him, which would be a stupid thing to do. At last, Apprentice Callum gets his turn. So I'm just feeding the fossa. See if he can get it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. How's that working out for you? Not too well. Really no. It's a real treat for me, so I'm enjoying every moment. Oh. And hopefully so are they. Yeah, that was one of those moments at work where you, you, you go home and you go, oh, that was really cool. <laughs> um, people don't generally come home from an office job like that. Just shut them down for a few hours so they get a bit of peace and quiet lights off and just leave them to it for a while. After a good night's sleep, the fossers will head off on the last leg of their journey. The racehorses made it safely to their stables across the country. Ella has got her feet right under the table in Bristol as the new office mascot. Ella craves human attention. She can work her way around the office. And the exotic animals from Madagascar arrived at their destination to begin new lives in the UK. That was really fun, really fun. 